Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. That is how the Gospel of Matthew begins, with this long genealogy listing for 42 generations the ancestors of Joseph. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus, who's pictured in this beautiful rose window in the north transept of our church. The point of the genealogy is to connect Jesus with the history of the Israelite people, and especially King David, who is portrayed in the bottom right-hand corner of this window as an old man with a harp. The genealogy establishes Joseph as the son of kings, in particular, as the great, 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 lots of greats, grandson of King David, Israel's greatest king. Joseph married Mary when she was pregnant with Jesus. God is the father of Jesus, but Joseph was his foster father and raised him and cared for him and his mother Mary. It's through Joseph that Jesus comes to be known as a son of David and a king in his own right. Looking closely at some of the details in the window, we see Joseph dressed in a red toga-like robe, kind of like the picture of Jesus that we looked at in the parable of the, the workers in the vineyard window. We see him surrounded by angels. One of the angels on our left is holding a carpenter's right angle tool, a carpenter's square, because J Joseph was a working man, a carpenter. So he's surrounded by angels and seated on the clouds, which symbolizes our belief as Catholics that he is a saint who is in heaven, in the presence of God, and as such, he can pray for us. That is the meaning of the Latin words we find underneath Joseph in one of the petals of the rose window. The words say, Ita ad Yosef, Ita ad Yosef, which means, go to Joseph. This means that we, as the community of St. Joseph Parish, with St. Joseph as our patron, we can turn to him and ask him to pray to God for us. Catholics do not pray to saints as if they were God. That's very important to realize. But we do believe that we can ask the saints who are in heaven to pray to God for us. And St. Joseph can be a very powerful helper and friend for us in our times of need. So the window tells us to go to him, to turn to him in prayer, and ask him to pray to God for us and bless us in all our needs. We also see St. Joseph holding a flower, which one of you noticed. It was really great that you saw that detail. The flowers are lilies. These flowers, which are often portrayed in pictures of St. Joseph, come from an ancient legend called the Protevangelium of James and its successive interpretation by other writers throughout history. According to this old story, probably written in the second century, that's the 100s AD, when it came time for a husband to be chosen for, for Mary, all the eligible widowers in the land of Israel, Palestine, were invited to come to the temple and bring their staffs, their walking sticks or their rods. They all presented their rods in the temple and it was Joseph's rod or staff out of which a dove flew. A dove, which is kind of a biblical symbol of the Holy Spirit, flew out of the staff and landed on Joseph's head in a kind of miraculous sign that Joseph was the person who would be the husband of Mary. A much later story, probably written around 800 AD, called the, the Gospel of Pseudo-Matthew, connects this miraculous sign related to Joseph's staff with a verse from the Bible that talks about the flowering of the rod of Jesse. So the flowers portrayed in the hand of Joseph are a symbol of the fact that he was the husband of Mary. He took her as his wife when she was pregnant with Jesus. She gave birth to Jesus, the Son of God, 
Joseph adopted Jesus, making Jesus also a descendant of David, and Joseph raised him and protected him throughout his early life. So what are some takeaways for us in contemplating this wonderful window? First, just knowing who St. Joseph is. He's the patron, the special guardian of our parish. We can ask him in our prayers to help us to pray to God for us. We can also relate this window to the concept of family and particularly to the fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother. As we talked about in our session, honor can have at least three different meanings. To honor your parents means to show respect toward them. It also means to obey what they tell us to do. And it also means to care for them when we are adults and we are able to support them when they grow old and they need our, our support and our help. So remembering that Joseph is the foster father of Jesus reminds us to think about our parents and to think about our relationship with them and to ask ourselves, are we following that fourth commandment to respect, to obey, and to care for our parents? So here's your homework. As always, make your own video. You don't have to show your face in the video. You can point the camera away from yourself at something else. Or if you want to get creative, it'd be wonderful if you put the picture of the stained glass window into your video if you're able to. First, read at least part of the genealogy in Matthew chapter 1. Just a couple of verses. A whole thing would be too long. But then explain in your own words what a genealogy is and what it means for how we understand who Joseph and Jesus are. Then explain the details of the window that we talked about together and that I've talked about in this video. And then as you go through your week this week, keep thinking about the fourth commandment, family, other things we've talked about, and be able to explain in your video telling a story about how you applied this teaching to your own life this week. Looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you.